if Scotland were independent tomorrow, we'd be the, the 14th most prosperous country in the, the OECD, the, you know, the Organization mm -hmm. of Rich Countries. America would be number four, but the UK is number 18. So the, the 14th country, most prosperous country in the world, can cut it as an independent country. If they couldn't, then the other 180 would be in severe trouble, the ones who'd be behind us, you know. That was the First Minister for Scotland, Alex Salmon, here on Morning Joe in April, talking about the push for Scotland's independence. And joining us now here on the set, the leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage. Very good to have you on the show. Thank this you morning. so much for being with us. You're, you're planning to go up to Scotland. You think that the effort to, as you say, save the union has been a lackluster effort. Lame. Talk about yeah, it. Yeah, very lame. <laughs> uh, led by career politicians who were dull, characterless. Um, and by comparison, Salmon, whether you like his politics or not, he's a personality. You know, he's right. a real guy, um, and people connect with him. I think that the Better Together campaign has been very, very weak. Uh, the real point is they're having an independence referendum, right? Salmon wants to break from Westminster, and yet he wants Scotland to be part of the European Union. So he doesn't really want independence at all. So, so there's a very false debate. So, and so wh wh why, why, does Scot why shouldn't Scotland be independent? What's the oh, downside of that? No, no, no. I believe in national self-determination. If Scotland mm -hmm. wants to be independent, that's fine. But I think they're being sold a pig in a poke. They're being told they can be independent and be members of the European Union. If you're members of the EU, their courts are supreme over, over yours. So it, it really is a false proposition. When you go back in um, to uh, I guess about six days before the referendum. Are you going to be concerned about having troubles because you had some when you oh. were hounded by protesters? You had to run and seek refuge somewhere. This is not an easy task. It's not a tea party. Yeah, no. no, it was it was horrible. In fact, the police locked me in a pub for my own safety. What? Now, that's never happened <laughs> well, before. How terrible is that, right? <laughs> At least it was a I mean, pub. It was pretty cool in one way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, nationalism. A sensible degree of nationalism is a good, healthy thing. We feel we belong to something, we respect something. But excessive nationalism is right. really very dangerous. And Salmond has stirred up amongst mm -hmm. 16 to 24 year old Scots a kind of anti English hatred, and it's pretty unpleasant. So I've no doubt I'm in for a rough time next oh. week. Uh, wow. Hopefully, Mike. you'll get locked in a good pub next time. <laughs> yeah. Mike. If the independence vote wins, yeah. what difference on a daily basis would that make for the average life of uh, a person in Scotland? Uh, well, I personally think that the economic sums that Salmond is putting d wouldn't add up. They would lose the English subsidy. Uh, they wouldn't get any, any subsidy from Europe because now we've let very poor countries in like Romania and Bulgaria. Um, and I think on a day-to-day -day basis immediately, very little change at all because actually they, they've got a fair degree of autonomy already. But I think down the road, I see it as a country that would face very serious economic problems. And it's all well and good yep. to talk about oil. Economic, oil, oil is so? diminishing. Economic problems. Yeah. Schools, welfare, what? Uh, the welfare costs in Scotland are huge, over, well over 50% of the people in Scotland are living on benefits of some kind. Uh, and you know, I don't see a very left-wing leader, and Salmond is a very left-wing leader, he's basically a former communist when he was a youngster, uh, he, he is not pro-business, he is not pro-deregulation, and I don't think Scotland right. would, would, would be very Let, Let's go to Gene Robinson. Gene, you mm -hmm. actually uh, were a yeah. reporter over in London for quite some time. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a fascinating mm -hmm. development, and also the Independence Party, uh, fascinating that it is uh, grabbing a lot of attention. Uh, for its mm -hmm. uh, be, for being euro euro skeptics. Yeah, well, you know, Euroscepticism is a, is a great, great hobby, a great UK hobby. You know, I, I, I did cover um, I, the, the UK. I was struck when I was there at how many Scots saw themselves as having almost a Scandinavian um, orientation rather than looking toward the South. And, you know, we're a northern country, too, and maybe we can, we can do something there. But wouldn't the day-to-day -day impact, wouldn't there be an impact on the use of the pound, the British pound, and the question of whether the Bank of England would uh, would guarantee, for example, Scottish debt, is that would there be a currency union with with uh, with England or the rest of the UK, or would there be a, would they be looking for a currency union with the EU, EU and using the euro? How would that work? Well, I think the truth of it is that for Salmon to rejoin the European Union, which is his stated aim, he would have to sign a treaty that would commit him to joining the Euro. Now, if you're in the Euro, you don't control your own economic and monetary policy. It's decided somewhere else. So, as I say, he's not really offering them any genuine form of independence. I believe in UK independence. I want the United Kingdom to be an independent free country where we trade with Europe but make our own laws. And, and we made one big call that we got right. We didn't join the Euro, and thank goodness for that. 
Nigel Farage, thank you so much thank for you. being on the show this morning. Great to see you. Still ahead, a Buckingham Palace guardsman shows off some new moves, and now he may be in really big He's trouble. Nigel thinks. What You're do you think of this? You're not supposed to do that, Nigel. Yeah. Is that okay? What, guards see what he's moves. doing there? He's going to dance. He's doing a little dance. No, it's not okay. Not okay? Are you sure? Jack, hey, Look, see, he's doing a pirouette. <laughs> Look, It's Nigel. bad, right? Is that bad? What should happen to him? Oh, come on. Royalty should be above all of it. It's regal. It matters if you keep it that way. Really? I think so. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So you're stunned, shocked, and deeply saddened? I don't approve. Oh, don't my approve? goodness. Oh, yes. Well, we'll have that story coming up. I tried not to laugh. We've already <laughs> seen that. See, Nigel, you might want to live a little, okay? I'm weeping. I'm weeping. Wow. You got me. Yes. Don't you just want to be happy? Don't you want one of those guys just to break down and do a jig once in a while? No, no, really. No.